Hey, super friends. Welcome to Superhero News. My name is Sean Gerber. And I'm Mark Hughes. And with us today is Stuart Bowling from Dolby. He is the Director of Content and Creative Relations. Stuart, welcome to Superhero News. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Mark. Great to be here. Spend some time with you guys. We're, uh, we're very happy to have you here. Now, just to get started, can you describe your role for our viewers of what your position is with Dolby? Sure. Um, so my role at Dolby is to work directly with filmmakers, uh, creatives, content creators, and is to really uh, evangelize, talk about our technologies, how they can benefit the filmmaker, um, both in the high dynamic range uh, area with Dolby Vision, uh, and then our immersive audio sound system, uh, Dolby Atmos, and then how collectively together they work uh, with our Dolby Cinemas. Great. Now, one of the, you mentioned you know working with filmmakers and, and obviously getting them on board with that process. I, I imagine that that requires you to build a lot of trust with filmmakers as you're being more and more collaborative uh, in their filmmaking process as they're finishing their movies and getting them ready for audiences. It does, absolutely. Um, and so typically the way that it works is uh, we're almost doing like a pitch in essence. So mm -hmm. you, know, you guys have been to our private um, lab in yes. Hollywood. Uh, so that's pretty much we bring the guys in, uh, you know, the directors, filmmakers into that room. Uh, we give them the overall pitch. We show them how the technology works. And then straight away, because of how different it is and how demonstrable it is, they're, they're all, wow, uh, or other forms of wow when they see it because they can't believe what they're seeing versus what they've been used to. Um, and then straight away they want to bring some of their own content back because that's something that they're very intimately familiar with mm -hmm. so they can see how it looks. Um, then they bring that content back and then we show that to them again inside the theater. Um, and then it's about figuring out the process of uh, where they are in their uh, schedule and workflow. Um, we can actually do color correction inside that theater, so we can bring a colorist in, bring oh, wow. a filmmaker in, bring their content in, and then we go through the entire process of color correcting that movie with them and then being there with them so that they uh, have that assurance that we're with them all of the way through. Um, and then, like you said, building that relationship so that you know we're with them all the way and keeping them up to date on our technologies and helping them where we can by giving them access to Dolby rooms around the world. Um, and then just helping them maximize the benefit of the technologies. Right now, some recent examples would be you know Batman v Superman last year, which we got to see at the Vine, which was looked great there. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. Kong Skull Island <clears throat> earlier this year, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, which had its premiere last week. It looked beautiful in the uh, inside the Dolby Theater with Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. But um, one of the things that I'm wondering is now that you're bringing filmmakers in and you're showing them this. What do you feel like their their response has been, and what are you seeing from them in the terms of the way they've embraced it, or just how impressed they they might be when they actually see this and you're color correcting it uh, in the Dolby Lab? Absolutely, um, they they go crazy from you get that audible gasp even when you just show something as simple as a a contrast test pattern, which is mm -hmm. the difference between black and white and right. how black we can go with a projector versus a, a regular cinema projector. I remember the first time I saw that, when you the very first time I right. yeah. put that up, and I was like, it's, it, you have to see it to believe it and to understand fully. You just get like a full, a full gasp from them. And then sometimes they get incredibly excited, and sometimes they'll be the odd expletive at like, but they can't <laughs> believe <laughs> what they're seeing. <laughs> And then they're like, wow, wow, run that thing again, um, <laughs> which is fantastic. Uh, and, it, you know, and it, it's all about the emotional context that they get from it, mm -hmm. because when images look more, uh, more visceral, more real, it becomes more engaging and it changes the emotional context between the viewer uh, and, and the story that the filmmaker is trying to mm -hmm. tell. Can you, just for for some of our viewers who maybe haven't experienced it yet, can you just real quickly explain like explain what what you're talking about when you talk about those contrast ratios, just in in kind of a layman's terms, what are they what they can expect and what how different it is from what they're used to? Absolutely. So, as an industry, everything used to be film, um, and that was the way we, you know we did everything for years. Then we transitioned away from film projectors to digital where everything is playing off hard drives, being projected digitally inside theaters. When that technology came out and then proliferated in our industry, um, there were some inherent uh, limits of the technology. And one of those limits was the ability of, of contrast inside a movie theater. 
So contrast is the difference between light and dark. The higher the number, the better it looks. The lower the number, it doesn't look necessarily as good as it could be. Um, and so if you take film as a medium, then filmmakers obviously, have, they're so intimately familiar with that process sure. and how it works and how it looks. So a good film negative would give you about 8,000 to 1 as a number. Then digital projectors today inside your average movie theater is 2,000 to 1. So we're at 25% of what mm. they're used to seeing on right. film, which is why you have very vocal filmmakers that still, you know, are holding on to film. Christopher Nolan being one of the loudest for Nolan, sure. Uh, Quentin Tarantino, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they love the look, the feel, and they know what they're getting from those mediums. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when we looked at improving the technology, we said that, okay, regardless of the resolution race that you normally get with technology, mm -hmm. you know, we started at 2K, now we're at 4K. Is it going to be 8K? Is it going to be 16K? Okay. Is it, you know, uber high frame rates? Uh, but what we figured out quickly was that improving contrast makes everything look better. And so that way we can allow the filmmaker to really use whatever medium they want. They can shoot in 4K, they can shoot in 2K, 3D, uber high frame rates, mm -hmm. uh, but adding contrast ratio of a million to one, it's not just an incremental difference of say going from 5.1 to 7.1, it's like 5.1 to Dolby Atmos now where we can fully immerse and pinpoint sound anywhere inside the space. And similarly with Dolby Vision now, they can go to absolute black inside the theater where you can have low light level, but you everything almost looks 3D without it being 3D right. because the yeah. contrast gives you that much depth. Everything looks sharper. And you're seeing things that you don't normally see before. You're seeing detailing grass. You're seeing, 100%. It's just like, it's constant eye candy. It's yeah. the best way I can describe it. Seeing the, jun and that, seeing the Jungle Book, I, yes. I, I literally, when Excellent talking point. to Sean right. and other people about it, mm -hmm. when I first saw it, I didn't see it in 3D, I just, but I saw it in, in Dolby Cinema and Dolby Vision, and I was remembering it thinking that I had seen it in 3D, and then when I went back and actually saw it, and th <laughs> because the color was so vibrant, right. yeah. so then when you do see it in 3D, you get that, that solid imagery and that impression. And I'm going to restate the number. It's eight thousand. It's zero to eight. It's eight zero to eight thousand versus uh, uh, eight thousand to zero versus yep. a million to zero. So that's yep. how much, how dramatically different the 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 contrast ratio is it's in Dolby Vision, and that's why I obsess about it and constantly go on about it because it's it's at the point you've experienced it. Everything else looks like. Just it's it, it's like listening to radio instead of watching television in a way. I mean, yeah, it really is. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's uh, the AMC 16 in, in Burbank has a Dolby Cinema yeah. in there, and that's kind of my appointment viewing for these films, especially the big superhero movies that we talk about so much on here. I saw Doctor Strange there, and I had seen Doctor Strange in IMAX 3D before that, and it looked great. Uh, but then when you can see it in Dolby Cinema with, in, with Dolby Vision, with, even without 3D, you're not missing the 3D because of the definition is so high uh, when you're watching it on the screen. It's really unbelievable. And Guardians of the Galaxy, when we we, we got to see it at a standard theater first uh, on the Disney lot last week, and then we went to the premiere, and it makes such a huge difference. Not that there's anything wrong with Disney's theater on yeah. their lot. It's fantastic. We love it. We, we love it very much, and we it's hope to very be nice. and hope to be invited back many times. But um, but seeing it in uh, Dolby Vision made a huge, huge difference, especially in the colors that you see, because James Gunn just litters those movies with bright, bold colors, uh, and they really show up, especially against set against the blackness of space. Those colors pop that much more when you have true black in space. Oh, absolutely, yeah, because you get that sense of depth and dimensionality mm -hmm. that normally space in a regular theater is kind of like milky gray mm -hmm. with, with pinpoints of light, but now it's jet black and it just has that, that awesome And you feeling. don't notice it, but when I'm watching it, uh, like when explaining it at home, for example, to my wife right. on our TV, I just put a Blu-ray in and then I'm like, look at what you think is black on this and what shadow. <laughs> yeah. And now look at the frame of the actual TV itself that's like, you know, black and uh, black plastic. I'm like, look, it's not really black on yeah. the, the image on the TV. It's gray. It looks like black that somebody spilled milk in. It's not <laughs> yeah. really. The darkest I shadows don't analogy. really work. And then the difference when you're right. in Adobe Vision, and it's like the the difference between that black and black, the dark the darkest shadow in the theater in real life, there's no difference. And that's 
something really remarkable to achieve, yeah. especially as you said for superhero films and for sci-fi films and for horror movies. You know, yeah, these are absolutely. things that really matter, yeah. and they completely affect being drawn into the movie and how you experience and how you react to the film and to the images on the screen. So the the great thing about what we're doing is is that the filmmakers don't necessarily have to go back and reshoot the, the movie on a specific camera. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Film cameras have so much density that we're able to scan all of that dynamic range out of it. Um, if they want to shoot digitally, the majority of digital cameras today, uh, like the, uh, the Aries and the, the Sonys, mm -hmm. they're already at like 16 stops. Our projector technically is 20 stops. So the camera makers can go even further right. um, in their development of what they can reproduce. But it's about the fact that we can do things now that they couldn't show before. So if you think of like, uh, you mentioned Skull Island, mm -hmm. there's you know, a beautiful shot uh, when we were grading that with Jordan where you know Kong is there in all of his majesty on the yes. island. The island is so brightly lit, but then there's like almost that apocalypse now mm -hmm. uh, nod where the sun is full on behind him. Yes. And that sun is like, just like in real life, it's intensely bright, yet we're right. able to show that and still maintain Kong so that you can see all the shadowing, all the beautiful detail, the way right. his, the weight of his fur, uh, the texture in his chest, all of that is maintained. In the regular version, the sun is too bright. Mm -hmm. We have to basically compromise the shot so we don't blow out Kong. Right. And so now it looks flat. So it doesn't look as as uh, as visceral or as engaging as it was originally. Right. Well, e even another shot that I loved in Kong that worked so well with Dolby was the shot where he, um, where he kind of emerges from the mist right in front of Brie Larson. So it's an, oh, it's, yeah. a, it's a night shot, and right. you wouldn't normally be able to see that much detail, but because there's so much separation in the black that you maintain full detail with his texture and everything else, and especially the detail on his face. Yeah. Um, comes across so well in that. So. I mean, right now at this point, people are kind of wondering where they get to go watch Dolby films. <laughs> <laughs> get to watch films in Dolby is, uh, is out. probably yeah. Well, we're busy geeking out. They're like, yeah, that sounds great, but where? Um, so, uh, there's how many theaters does Dolby have? Are there Dol how many Dolby cinemas are there in the U.S. right now? Okay, great question. So today we have a uh, an incredible partnership with AMC Theaters, which is where you can find a Dolby cinema. Uh, today we have 70 locations. Uh, we will reach 100 by the end of this year domestically. Um, and then as we roll through the end of next year, we should hit around 165 with wow. AMC. So there's two ways you can find out where they are. You can go to Dolby.com uh, under our Dolby Cinema page, and you can search by zip code mm -hmm. uh, and see where the nearest one is. You can also go to AMC's corporate website, um, and look on there uh, and then find out where their Dolby cinemas are. And then actually AMC is really good about letting you know what their next up and coming locations mm -hmm. are. So if there's not one in, in your city, take a look down below and it should let you know what the, which ones are, are, are up and coming. But basically we have engineers scattered across the US right now every week that are just running around installing these <laughs> yeah. uh, and bringing Dolby cinemas online around so the you're US. you're putting up the the screens the so we do a yeah a full retrofit of the theater which involves taking the, the auditorium down mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh re-evaluating the uh stadium seating um amc has done a fantastic job at using luxury recliners inside these theaters so it's it's almost like you're in it's first very class nice. <laughs> it is well it's nice but i also like that there's kind of enough space between yeah. us yes. because i love you all but i don't love you not that much um it's yeah. a love you we just don't. Yes. Not yeah, exactly. It's a shared experience. We don't have to share the same bubble. Um, we don't have to do that. I like a little bit of separation there. Um, but uh, we also have a lot of international viewers outside the U.S. Yes. So what okay. what areas are, are Dolby Cinemas in right now? What other countries? Okay, so today Dolby Cinema is available in Europe. Um, we, are, we have two locations in the Netherlands, um, in... Um, uh, I can't remember where right now, but we have two, uh, Eindhoven, and uh, there's one just outside of Amsterdam mm -hmm. as well. Um, then we have one in Barcelona. Uh, then we also have Cineplex in Austria, where we have, uh, I believe, three locations right now okay. uh, with them. And then there'll be more coming um, with Cineplex in Austria. In China, with Wanda Cinemas, which is the, the biggest global exhibitor uh, in the yeah. world today, um, we have around about 18 locations deployed with them. Um, 
We have a commitment to 100 screens with Wander in China. Um, and so those will work amazing. their way out yeah. through Beijing and, and Shanghai. Uh, Jackie Chan Cinemas as well. Okay. Uh, they actually have the busiest location in Beijing. Uh, we That is a Dolby Cinema now, so you can go and experience that in Beijing. And then if you're in the Middle East, Dolby Cinemas uh, coming there. We just made the announcement with Real Cinemas. Uh, oh, wow. and Dolby Cinemas will begin to roll out uh, in that region as well. Very Very cool. So yeah, this year it's already been big year with Kong Skull Island, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 starting up. What else is coming out in Dolby Cinema this year? So we've got a lot of titles coming. Um, Obviously all the filmmakers that we show it to embrace it. Uh, But in the superhero verse, we have uh, Wonder Woman is coming out this summer. That will be in Dolby Cinema, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos. Um, As will Spider-Man Homecoming uh, uh, that's coming out. And then, of course, later as the closeout of the year for DC is uh, the next chapter of the Justice League, uh, which we're excited to see. Yeah, well, we're excited. We're we're kind of in the tank for those movies anyway. (laughs) We'll be there. Yeah, we will be there, and uh, we will be enjoying them even in the best possible way with Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. Yeah. So, uh, Stuart, I want to thank you very much for taking the time to join us on Superhero News. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, and I uh, really love getting to know uh, a little bit more about what your your process of working with the filmmakers. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, Absolutely. it's always a pleasure. And Dolby, I, I can't say this enough. Uh, I talk about it in my reviews at Forbes. We talk about it here. Uh, this is, I've been obsessed with Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos since the first time I saw them and I'm I'm not real tech savvy in a lot of ways, but I love the technology behind it. And it matters to me how I experience the movies in theaters, how I experience them at home. I'm a cinephile. I love these movies. I will watch, I'll go over and over for repeat viewings. So I want to see it in the best way possible. I can't stress enough. If there's a Dolby vision theater near you, when you see guardians of the galaxy, to really get the immersion and the visual impact that James Gunn wants and intends with this movie and so much work went into it see it the best way possible and that is Dolby Vision I I, I love Stuart I love Dolby <laughs> but me to say that I say that <laughs> all the time to Where's everyone <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much for coming and, and talking. It's always absolutely a pleasure. yeah, and my you, pleasure. And you'll know exactly what we're talking about when Wham Bang Shang. <laughs> well, was it Wham Bam? Sh- oh, Wham Bam Shangalang comes on in Guardians yes. of the Galaxy Volume Two. <laughs> when that song plays, you will know exactly what we're talking about when we talk about Dolby Cinema. Uh, so our thanks once again to Stuart for joining us. If you want to keep up with superhero news, you can do that at superheronews.com on Facebook, facebook.com/superheronews.com, and on Twitter at Superhero News CB. Mark, where can everybody keep up with you? You can find me on Twitter at Mark Hughes Films, and you can always find me reviewing movies and talking about filmmaking and superheroes at Forbes. Stuart, where can everybody find you on Twitter? Uh, I'm on Twitter as well, uh, at UK Boomer, uh, and you can find me there talking about what I'm up to and on my escapades. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and you can find me on Twitter at Mr. Sean Gerber. So for Mark and Stuart, I'm Sean. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.